So, where do you get the Winds Loft? Well, you can Google it, and the first one that pops up is going to be the aviationweathercenter.gov, and that is going to be your most reliable source. So, if you click on that, it takes you to avi aviationweather.gov. Now, you can use up here, you can use a graphical interface where you can move the map and move the time as well as the altitude. But I like to use the tabular format, which is down here, this map, easy map of the United States with a bunch of red dots on it. Now, basically, all you have to do is click where you want your data from. So if you want it in uh, Seattle, you just click on Seattle and then it will take you to the table of data. Okay, so what the heck does all this data mean? I'm going to go step by step through the most important aspects of this table and what it all means and how you can read it. So in this example, we're in the Northeast Boston region of the U.S. Uh, first things first, you're going to have two drop down boxes up top. You're going to have your time frame and the region of the U.S. So just like you clicked on a region of the U.S., you can actually change the region by using this drop down box and then the time frame you're gonna have three different time frames you're gonna have two your current time frame and then two time frames in the future for a future forecast so just make sure that you're looking at the right time frame for your flight so the next thing we're going to talk about is three times that you'll see in the header there's going to be a data based on time a valid time and a for use time now really the only one that you really want to make sure on is the for use time if you're planning a flight at a certain time you want to make sure that it falls within the range of the for use time of so if, of the data you're using uh, now the data based on invalid times can be a little confusing if your instructor or examiner quizzes you on it i'll explain to you the differences just for that purpose but really you just got to focus on the for use time so the data based on time they run a model to get all these numbers so the data based on time is when they run that model so the first two num numbers are the day of the month so for the data based on it's on the fifth of the month and the last four are the time so the fifth of the month at 1800 zulu was when the model was run now when they run the model the model is doing a forecast so they need to tell the model how many hours in advance to forecast it so that is the valid time. So they're saying, okay model, run this for the sixth of the month at 0000, 000, 000, 000 Zulu. And that is the valid time. And then your for use time, the first number is going to be, might be a little bit before that valid time, a little bit after that time. And that just tells you, you can use it, this data in this time range. And that's really what you need to care about. Next, let's talk about the, the table itself. The top row is going to be altitudes. So you have, 3,000 feet, 6,000 feet, 9,000 feet, 12,000, 18, 24, 30, 34, and 39. And then the first column is going to be major city or area of the forecast. So I'm not super familiar with that area, but we got Buffalo, Albany, you know, JFK, Boston. So uh, you can look back on the chart to see where exactly these are. So the next kind of section that's of importance is the last three columns. You're going to notice that in all these columns, you have four digits followed by a plus or minus sign, then two more digits. But in, in this blue box over here, you just have six straight digits there is no minus sign so the reason that is there's no minus or plus sign the reason why that is is that the last two digits are temperature and they don't put a sign in because you're so high up that it's always below zero so you just always assume that it's a negative temperature for 30,000 feet 34,000 feet and 39,000 feet okay so let's start over here uh, so basically there's three different formats that this chart uses I kind of went over them briefly but so the first one is just four digits in this first column for 3,000 feet here the first two digits are wind direction in tens of degrees and the last two digits are wind speed in knots so the one I have highlighted is the wind direction is from 0 to 0 so you basically add a zero to that. So from zero to zero, from 20 degrees, 
at 0 06 knots. And the reason why there is no temperature data on this 3000 feet one is because it's just going to assume that you use a ground temperature for that. So the next one we're going to go to is this one which has the four digits a sign plus or minus sign then two digits so again the first two digits are wind direction and tens of degrees so in the highlighted below it that would be 320 so wind is coming from direction of 320 degrees the third and fourth digits are going to be wind speed in knots so that's 10 knots and then the plus minus sign is going to be temperature so in this case it would be plus six degrees and that's in Celsius. Finally over here we have our third format. This is above 30,000 feet and above where there is no plus or minus sign. And like I said before, this just assumes that the last two digits of temperature are negative. So the first four digits are gonna be the same. The first two digits are wind direction. Second two digits are wind speed and last two digits are temperature. So this one reads, uh, the wind direction is 240 or from 240 degrees at 78 knots and the temperature is negative 58 degrees Celsius. Okay, so there's a few more formats and weird numbers that you're going to see, three in particular. So the first one is you're gonna see 9900 and what this means is the winds are light and variable. So you can assume that these winds are zero. They're too light and too variable to get a reading on. So you'll see a 9900. The next is going to be a blank. So when you see no data, it's either going to mean the station couldn't get data because it wasn't, it didn't supply any data or because most likely these altitudes are in MSL and the elevation of this station is above 3000 feet MSL. So let's say the elevation is 4000 feet. Obviously 3000 feet MSL would be in under the ground and you're not going to get winds under the ground so the first reading for that station would be at 6,000 feet and the last one over here is going to be when you see the first two digits greater than 360 so the first two digits remember are wind direction so that means that they can be between 0 and 360 degrees so if you see them over 360 like in the highlighted one below that says 76 that would mean 760 degrees that doesn't make sense the reason they do that is they they have to compress this data into six digits. They can't add another digit. And they do this because the wind speed is greater than 100. So instead of writing wind speed 108, they get rid of the 1 and just put 08. And to, to tell the user that they're doing this, they add 5. They add 50 to the wind direction. So we'll get to this in an example next, the best way to understand that. Let's start with our first example here, 2630 minus 12. This is at 18,000 feet for the station EMI. So at an altitude of 18,000 feet above the area of EMI, the wind is coming from a direction of 260, so 260 degrees at a speed of 30 knots and the temperature is negative 12 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's go to our second example. Now this one is at 34,000 feet at our station CMH and it's 255853. So again, 35,000 feet above the area of CMH. Wind is coming from direction of 250, so 250 degrees at a speed of 58 knots. And the temperature, remember, is assumed negative when there is no sign and it's above 30,000 feet. So that 53 is going to be assumed negative 53 degrees Celsius. Now in our third temperature, we'll do one that has greater than 360 for the wind direction. So this one, it reads 760153. So this is at an altitude of 34,000 feet above the area of CAR. So again, the rule is when you see the first two digits above 360 what you do is you're going to subtract 50 from those first two digits so 76 minus 50 is 26 and this is your wind direction so then now you just add a zero to it like before so the wind direction is 260 degrees now your speed is your next two digits and this we know is above 100 so we add 100 to this so our speed is 101 knots 
our direction is 260 degrees and our temperature again is assumed negative because it's above 30,000 feet so our temperature is negative 53 degrees celsius okay i hope everyone understood these well if you have any questions please comment below and you, as always you can follow me on instagram at part period time period pilot i have over 35 now or four almost 40 conceptual diagrams and stuff trying to make things easier for you guys out there trying to study up for your written test or a check ride so thanks and have a great day